Rego presents Installation, Inspection, and Maintenance of Final Line Regulators. First, let's review some important safety considerations. Only qualified personnel should perform installation and maintenance. Be sure to read and understand all instructions before installation, operation, or maintenance. These instructions must be passed on to the end user of the regulator as well. Avoiding the inhalation of or the skin contact with compressed and cryogenic gases is advised. Many of these gases can cause asphyxiation, serious injury, or even death. See the safety data sheet for specific information regarding the safe handling of the service gas. Evacuation of the gas should take place in a well-ventilated area to ensure dispersion. Keep gases far away from open flames or other sources of ignition to prevent fire or explosion. Now let's review how the valve should be installed and tested. While the regulator will function installed in any orientation, you should consider the bonnet's vent hole position to prevent water from entering the bonnet and to allow the draining of any water from condensation. Use of a line strainer upstream of the regulator is recommended to prevent contamination and even damage to the regulator's seat. First, clean dirt and any foreign material from all piping and fittings. If the regulator is used for oxygen, you must ensure that all components of the system are completely free of dirt, dust, and particulates. Apply a pipe joint compound suitable for the gas service, such as PTFE or Teflon tape, to the male threads on the piping. Install the regulator according to the flow direction, noting the inlet and outlet stamped on the regulator. Follow all local and national codes and standards for pressure testing and leak testing during the installation. If leak detection solution is needed, use it sparingly. Next, let's look at the operation and pressure adjustment. The regulator may be set for flowing or lockup pressure. The pressure range is stated on the regulator's nameplate as shown here. If set under flowing conditions, the flow should be shut off downstream to check the lockup pressure. If this lockup pressure is above the desired maximum allowed system pressure, the setting must be reduced to in turn reduce the lockup pressure. If this is not possible, the regulator is just too small for the application and a large capacity regulator will be necessary. Let's set the regulator's outlet pressure. On the BR1780 series, remove the bonnet cap to expose the adjusting screw. Loosen the lock nut. To increase pressure, turn the adjustment screw in. To decrease pressure, turn the adjustment screw out. Once the desired setting is obtained, operate the regulator several times by operating the downstream flow control device and readjust if necessary. While holding the adjustment screw from turning, tighten the lock nut. Replace the bonnet cap if present. Regulators should be inspected on a regular basis. The inspection period depends on the application, service conditions, environment, and regulatory requirements. Here's where you need to look and what to look for. Many visual inspections can be accomplished without disassembling the valve. The primary inspection points are the diaphragm, the back cap gasket, the body, and the bonnet. During this inspection, verify that the valve does not have the following conditions. Any signs of corrosion due to water, salt, industrial pollutants, chemicals, and roadway contaminants. Any physical damage that would prevent proper sealing or that may cause product failure under pressure. Leaks in the valve bonnet area or between the body and the connections of the valve. Confirm proper operation as foreign matter may affect the performance of the regulator. The presence of any of these conditions could impair proper function of the regulator and result in serious injury, property damage, or both. What you do not need to check for is the torque value of the bolts. Checking torque values can cause the loosening of the bolts. It is recommended that you retorque bolts only if a leak has been detected. Before we get into the disassembly and the reassembly of the regulator, you should know that replacement is always better than rebuilding it. Rego does not recommend the field repair of regulators because factory equipment, trained personnel, and technical supervision which should be employed are rarely available for field repairs. More economy and safety will result from replacing old, worn-out regulators with newly manufactured products. If you are going to repair a regulator, always remove the regulator from the system before starting repairs. Regulators must never be repaired while installed in the system. All repaired regulators must be properly bench tested before being placed back into the system. Do not repair a regulator if proper bench testing equipment is not available. 
Let's review the disassembly procedure. Turn off the inlet pressure to the regulator. If equipped with a bonnet cap, remove it and then loosen the lock nut. Adjust the screw in enough to ensure that there is some compression on the delivery spring. Evacuate all gas downstream of the regulator. Remove the regulator from the system. Place the regulator in a vise with the bonnet facing toward the top. Turn the adjusting screw out until all spring tension is released. Remove the bonnet screw and save it for reassembly. Remove all bonnet screws and save them for reassembly. Separate the bonnet from the body. Remove the stem button and save it for reassembly. Remove the diaphragm and the diaphragm liner and discard them. Remove the spring button, large spring and diaphragm plate. Be sure to save these for reassembly. Reposition the regulator in the vise with the back cap toward the top now. Using a suitable wrench, turn the back cap counterclockwise to remove it and discard it. Remove the spring and discard it. Remove the Teflon seal from the body and discard it. Remove the seat disc assembly and discard it. Check all parts that you will use again to see that they are clean and free from defects before reassembly of the regulator, especially the body seat. Remember, if the regulator is being used for oxygen service, all parts should be thoroughly cleaned and blown out using compressed air. To reassemble your regulator, you will first need to get a rebuild kit like the one shown here. You need to note that there is a cutaway diagram showing how all the parts go together and full instructions on how to rebuild the valve within the kit. We will follow these instructions in this video. Also, note which parts will be used again and which ones will be replaced. Always use the new parts if supplied in the kit. Lubricate the O-ring of the new seat disc assembly with a lubricant suitable for the gas the regulator is used on. Install the new seat disc assembly with the new small spring. Nest the spring in the socket of the seat disc assembly. Place the new Teflon seal in the counterbore of the body. Install the new back cap in the body using approximately 30 foot-pounds of torque. Now, reposition the regulator in the vise to install the bonnet. Place the stem button on the end of the seat disc assembly stem. Remove the diaphragm and the liner from the sealed package carefully. Do not cut the diaphragm. Position the Teflon liner on the body flange first, aligning the holes carefully, followed by the nitrile diaphragm. Note the orientation of the stripes on the nitrile diaphragm. These go against the Teflon liner. Place the diaphragm plate in the center of the diaphragm, now the large spring, and finally the spring button. Align the holes from the body with the diaphragm and replace the bonnet with the holes aligned to those of the body. Thread the eight bonnet screws into the body and don't forget to replace the tag on one of the screws. Tighten the screws in a diagonal pattern to 40 to 50 inch-pounds of torque. Finally, replace the bonnet adjustment screw and the bonnet cap, if present. Your regulator repairs are now complete. 
but the regulator must be bench tested for performance and leakage before it is allowed to be placed back in service. Once placed in service, check for leaks at the inlet and the outlet with high quality leak detecting solution.